Okay, everybody, uh, this is the second part of our GIF or GIF making video. So I'm starting off where we were with our file in the last video. So I had made a frame animation um, project, as you can see down here. Now, if you're starting from scratch, just give me one second, because in case you are starting with me, I'm going to kind of delete all these scenes so we can do the video timeline view. So we did this in frame animation. If you take a look at the different frames, we have 13 frames, which is great. If we were to take a look at our layers, uh, which, excuse me, there they are. Um, one thing we actually want to do right now is get rid of all these frames so we can do this in video timeline mode. So I'm actually going to grab um, all these frames we made, and I'm clicking one, and I'm holding on shift and clicking on the last one here, and then pressing the trash can. So I go back to the first frame. Okay, so if you were starting from scratch, um, just make sure you have a background, some type, and some other kind of object, which in my case is a red dot. And what you would do if you had already started in frame animation is you could click in the bottom left corner here, and that would switch it to video, uh, t video timeline mode. Um, if you were starting from scratch, you would go to window timeline, and in window timeline, you would get the choice at the bottom of the screen, which I'm already past that choice, where you could either choose frame animation or video timeline. So now we're doing it in video timeline mode. Now the thing about video timeline mode is that you'll notice the screen is a little bit more, it's a little more complicated. We don't see the frames that we saw before. Instead what we see is a, a representation of each layer. And then each layer has this purple bar. And then if you were to click on the little arrow next to each layer, there's different settings for each layer. But before we dig into that, let's just take a look at the timeline view itself. You'll notice there's a play button. There's a little gear here to change your playback options. There's a playhead. And then there's also a timer down here at the bottom keeping track of your time. You'll also see at the top of the timeline, uh, you'll see these little frames and they also relate to seconds. So I'm actually gonna use this little mountain slider that you see at the bottom here and I'm going to make the mountain come in a little bit. And all this mountain slider does is it's basically a zoom function. So I'm going to zoom down because right now you can see that my animation takes five seconds, which for a GIF uh, is actually quite, quite long. So we're going to make it a little shorter. Let's change the time of our GIF to be three seconds. So I'm doing that by dragging this little gray slider, which controls the length of the entire movie that we're going to make because now we're making a movie we're making a video it's a little bit different than the frame we were using before uh, so i made the time go down to three seconds then the next thing i need to do is also just change the time of these individual uh, sections of my video these individual layers that are now part of my video so i'm clicking on the right hand side and dragging and i'm shrinking their duration you'll notice that now they're all ending at three seconds now the other thing to remember when you're doing video timeline mode is it helps uh, if you make your objects into smart objects in your layers palette because that's going to give you more control as to what you can do with them inside of the video timeline mode. So that's the next step we're going to do here. We're going to go back to our layers and I'm going to go to my uh, type layer. I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to convert it to a smart object. Now again, I'm doing that because it helps when you start to do the animations. I'm also going to go to my red dot. I'm going to right click on that guy as well and uh, convert it to a smart object. Okay, So I converted both of those to smart objects. I'm going to leave the blue background alone because I'm not going to do much to it anyway. So now if you take a look at the layers, what we want to do is we want to animate them with what are known as keyframes. So I'm going to zoom in uh, one time into my canvas here, plus, um, that's command plus or control plus if you're on a PC. And what I'm going to do is let's take a look at this red dot layer. So I'm going to open up the little triangle there to see the chunks inside of the red dot layer. And there's these three controllable things, transform, opacity, and style. And I'm going to keep it simple for now and just deal with transform and opacity. And you, hopefully this will start to make sense. The things we have to do is we have to decide what we want the object to do at a specific time in the timeline. And when we press the keyframe button, it records what's happening at that time. So right now, if let's say we really like the red dot to start on the left side of our 
of our screen and we like wanted to start right at this very location then we would what we could do is click on the little stopwatch and we're going to click on the little stopwatch next to the word transform when we click on that you'll notice a little golden diamond appears in the timeline that means it's recording the red dot at this time in this place so at this time this is at zero seconds so basically the red dot will always start at this location at zero seconds so let's say we want the red dot to move across the screen and we want it to you know maybe be at the complete right side of our canvas by the end of the three seconds then here's the steps the steps are we move the playhead ahead in time to three seconds then grab our move tool and we're gonna move the dot now watch what happens as soon as I move the dot across the screen you're gonna see that as soon as I let go the golden dot is gonna appear again now this time it's a little bit gray but it's still another keyframe what that's doing is it's recording the red dot at two and a half seconds at this very moment so now if I was to slide the slider back and forth you'll notice it's gonna do a, a graceful animation based upon the two keyframes that I made. Now if you notice it gets a little pixelated as it travels that's because the computer has to render the animation. Um, you can adjust those settings down here there's a little gear you can change the resolution to be higher if needed. 50% uh, for now is gonna be fine because it'll let the computer run a little bit smoother but I am gonna click on the loop playback button so now I'm just gonna press play so we can just take a look at what I did and you'll see that the red dot is going to travel across the screen and it's going a little slower it usually goes a little slower the first time when it's rendering it for the first time and then it's going to stop where I told it to stop and then since I have it on loop playback it's going to loop back and forth so you can tell it's going a little faster now so that's the basics of frame animation. Let's let's continue with this idea to have it make more sense. Let's press stop. Let's bring the uh, the playhead back to zero. So let's add this to the mix. Let's say we want the red dot to be visible, then invisible, and then visible again. So again, we put the playhead at zero, and if we like the red dot to start with full visibility, full opacity then everything looks great here so we're gonna hit now the little stopwatch for opacity it's gonna record the red dots opacity settings for zero seconds okay now let's say I want the red dot to fade to nothing about halfway through our video well, then I'm gonna move my playhead forward and then I'm gonna make a change to the opacity settings Let's say I'm going to take the opacity down uh, to something very, very small, like 10%. You'll notice as soon as I make that change in opacity, it adds another diamond or another keyframe. Well, now I'm going to drag the timeline all the way to three seconds, and I'm going to bring the opacity back up to 100. You'll notice as soon as I change this and I let go of the change, a new keyframe has been added. Aha, uh -huh. so now if we were to press play, and again, remember it's going to kind of warm up to it. It's got to render it the first time the computer's got to figure out exactly what's happening. But you'll notice that the red dot's going to fade as it hits that moment, and then it's going to come back to life as it goes and finish off, finishes off the animation. So again, the keyframe there, what we did is we recorded what happens at a specific moment in time and then the computer kind of makes up the rest. It kind of figures out the rest of the stuff. So that's working great. So let's uh, let's just go ahead and throw another little uh, spin on this. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, press stop again, close the red dot, and let's talk about rotation this time. So I'm going to click um, on the this is type layer. What I'm doing here is I'm going to rotate the type. So I take a look at the type, and at zero seconds, I like the type to sit exactly where it's at. So I'm going to hit on the transform button. So it's going to record the type and the way it, it looks at zero seconds. Then I'm going to go ahead and slide this uh, blue playhead forward. And at three seconds, 
I want the type to rotate. So I'll press Control T or Command T, depending on whether or not you're on the Mac or the PC. And I'm going to rotate this type. And then once I rotate it, I'll hit Enter. Now, as I slide the playhead back and forth, you'll notice it's going to record that. And what it's really doing, again, with the whole keyframe thing, is you're telling it what you want it to do in the beginning and what you want it to do at the end of the animation, and it'll figure it out. And those are, you know, basically the building blocks of, of how you build a video timeline animation. And now I'm going to throw something a little extra in there because you can add video to your video timeline, meaning you could get a video um, that you recorded somewhere or a video you've made or something you got from, from the web and you can throw it into your GIF animation. You may have seen you know, um, things on Tumblr, for example, where people take a video cap and they, you know, they use it as part of their, their animation. Okay, so I'm actually going to place the video that you see at the beginning of my YouTube. So it's like my little um, you know, intro video. So I'm going to place that into this project. I'm going to go to File, Place Embedded, and I'm going to find the file. Okay, so here is, you can see there's a little file called Santos says intro vid.movie. So if you were just to watch this movie, it's just, a, it's just the intro movie that I created for YouTube. And there it goes, right? So if I want to incorporate this into my project, I can. You can take any file that's saved in a, in a movie format. So here's this movie format, and I'm going to press place. What I'm doing is I'm placing it into... Photoshop. I'm placing it into the video timeline. It's going to take a minute to do that depending on the size of your object. And there you can see this is a representation of this video that I created, which I'm now adding to my project. You're going to see the X across the screen um, or across the object letting you know that you just placed it. If you press enter, then it officially places it into your document. And as you can see, as I, pre as I drag the playhead forward, I will see my little animation, which is that little purple and pink thing I created in the center there. So again, you could grab any video you want from anywhere on the internet and you can throw it into your Photoshop video timeline. Um, I'm going to shrink this down to make it go back down to three seconds like we did earlier. And some of the crazy stuff you can do here is this act is just a layer like any other layer in Photoshop. So you could actually press uh, Command T to transform this layer. And you can do things like distort it or transform it or, you know, do a bunch of weird stuff to it. So I'm actually just going to go ahead and make this thing a lot bigger. It's going to look distorted, obviously, because it's going to be um, way too wide. But as I press enter, I just, again, I'm just showing you how it's going to play that video in there. Uh, the one thing you'd want to do now is you'd want to save this for the web. So in my case, I'm just going to take, take away that, that video that we just added by clicking on that layer. And I'm going to press delete and get rid of it. So we're back to where we started. So now to test what we had prior, or to test the work that we've created so far, we're going to go up to File, Save for Web, and we'll choose one of the GIF settings. Now since we use Video Timeline Mode, um, it's probably going to be a bigger file than it was in Frame Animation, and that's because there's more things happening, there's more frames that have been created with all these this video transitions. So you might need to change your settings to, for the GIF to make sure it's the appropriate weight for whatever application you need. Uh, the other thing you have to make sure of whenever you use video timeline mode is where it says looping options. You want to go ahead and change that to forever. But that looks good. So now I can save this file. So I'm going to save it next. And this is my second GIF experiment, the last, so I'll call this GIF experiment video. And I'm going to save it. And now that it's saved, I can go over to my browser, like Firefox or Chrome or whatever. And I'm going to go to File, Open File. And I'm going to test my new GIF. So here's my new GIF. A lot bigger than the last one. You can tell the kilobytes are bigger because there's more information. And I'll press Open. And there it is, it's working in my browser. So now I know I've created a video-based GIF or GIF. So thanks a lot for watching, everybody. 
hopefully those two um, methods made sense. And uh, keep watching for more tutorials, and please subscribe. And if you have any more questions, just go ahead and add a comment in the comment section. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.